Unprecedented droughts and heat waves have put water scarcity into sharp focus. Worldwide, more than 2 billion people lack access to clean water and climate change is likely to increase the frequency of extreme weather events. Here's a look at the impact that water scarcity is having in countries around the world right now. Drought is ravaging northern Mexico, where farm animals are dying from a lack of water. Harvests have been disrupted and fisheries culled as the country experiences one of its worst droughts in over 30 years. In Hungary, severe drought has turned lakes into muddy pits. Low water supplies are putting wildlife at risk and farmers in the worst affected regions are struggling to find enough green pasture to feed their livestock. Drought has also dried up much of China's largest freshwater lake. The Poyang Lake connects to the Yangtze River and has been reduced to a quarter of its usual size. As water levels continue to drop, one of China's key rice growing regions is under threat. These historic droughts across the Northern Hemisphere are putting fresh water scarcity in focus. Among the most concerning shortages is on the Tibetan Plateau in Asia. It's the globe's largest fresh water reserve and a lifeline for the surrounding region. But it's heating up and scientists say weak climate policy could lead to a collapse in water supply by mid-century. The Indus is a mighty body of water. But in just a few decades, this river might turn into little more than a trickle. Like most of the largest rivers in Asia, it originates in the Tibetan Plateau, a region also known as Asia's water tower. Almost two billion people in Central Asia, Afghanistan, Pakistan and India depend on water that springs from here. Scientists say this huge water reserve will likely soon run dry. Researchers from China and the U.S. conducted measurements in the mountainous region and analyzed satellite pictures of the Tibetan Plateau. Much of the water here is stored as ice and snow. When the glaciers disappear due to rising temperatures, so will the stream of meltwater that feeds the rivers. Predictions are bleak. Around 230 gigatons of water could be lost. That's enough to fill over 90 million Olympic-sized swimming pools if CO2 emissions are not radically and rapidly reduced. The researchers add that more alternative water supply sources like wells and even pipelines may be necessary to meet the shortage in the not too distant future. But it's unclear if that will be enough to sustain the hundreds of millions of people who depend on the plateau's rivers. Jenny Kronwall is an advisor on water policy at the Stockholm International Water Institute. Can I ask you this question? Are we at fault for some regions now running out of water all of a sudden? Yeah, I'm afraid we have to put it like that. Indeed, yes, uh, we are at fault. There is so much attribution science today that we can actually directly link our activities and non-activities to climate change and the impact on water. So, yes. So, should we be looking for more solutions like wells and pipelines or, or would that just cause other problems and exhaust groundwater reserves, for example? Um, let's say that there are very many parts of the world where groundwater is still underdeveloped and Sub-Saharan Africa is one of them. Um, lots of research and studies there have shown that sustainable, uh, prudential use of groundwater there uh, can very much be um, can be a solution to the groundwater uh, to the, the water needs that we have. Whereas in other parts of the world, such as India, um, we have a peak, water, peak groundwater situation in large parts of the country because um, the groundwater has been developed too much and too um, too soon mm -hmm. um, with the techniques. So groundwater is a solution, but what else can be done, in your opinion? Um, so there are many uh, different solutions in terms of um, water resources management. And um, one of them is also to embrace a human rights based approach to water resources management, which would mean that we ensure to prioritize basic human needs for drinking water uh, before any water is allocated to other sources, sectors of society. 
And actually, we see this type of reasoning already today with respect to the electricity shortage in Germany and elsewhere in Europe, that domestic needs must be met, first of all. What about something but like then, course, waste of water? Because that's sorry. something, uh, of course, that you uh, come up against with, with industry, with factories, with agriculture too, and with consumers. How big a problem is wastewater? Waste of um, wastewater or waste of water. So waste of water is quite massive a problem today. Um, we can and we must make use of our water in a much more efficient way. We must um, go for water demand management. And I fear that sooner rather than later, we must start prioritizing what fresh water can and should be used for. Um, and recycling and circular economy has to be made mandatory in very many sectors. Does water management play a big enough role in the global discussion when it comes to climate change, in your opinion? Um, well, increasingly so, at least. Maybe not big enough. But if we look at last year's COP26 in Glasgow, it had for the first time a water pavilion where those interface matters were showcased and discussed. And this year in Egypt, um, the host will address this even more and paying attention to how water is a medium through which we experience climate change is very much the first step. Great to get your take on this. Jenny Kronwall from the Stockholm International Water Institute. Thank you very much. Thank you. In many parts of Kenya, drinking water is hard to come by. A startup there has come up with an invention that they say can help solve Africa's water woes by extracting it from the air. Take a look. This stream is vital for Nairobi resident Rosario Kazui and her family. They spend half an hour each day here getting hold of their daily water supply. It is the water we use to bathe, drink and cook with. At times, our children have suffered from stomach aches. When our stomachs hurt, we go to the hospital. The United Nations estimates that nearly 10 million Kenyans drink directly from contaminated sources. Climate change is drying up access to clean water, and the problem is made worse by a growing population. Magic Water is a company that aims to change that by turning humid air into water anywhere. So basically this machine is called uh, an atmospheric water generator um, and it can produce up to 500 litres of water but sometimes if the humidity is higher than 60 percent relative humidity it can produce all the way to 700 litres of water. Specifically. The machine contains fans that bring in air, a condenser and refrigerating components, a filtration device and a collecting tank. This Nairobi school has one. The school used to have problems with contaminated drinking water, but no more. The problem is that the machines cost between 9 and 12,000 euros. These innovations have not been scaled up due to, of course, lack of funding, and quite a number of them are expensive, so that we can get good enough water, not only for household consumption, but also for irrigation and for livestock consumption. Once installed, the water pulled in from the air is free. With access to groundwater expected to get worse, the air may be the only real source of water left for many people here.